Right, so yeah, as Sam said, I'm Zach, I'm the Managing Director of Prezbox.com and today I'm going to be talking about not being awesome, but being alright at everything. Okay, and more particularly, I'm going to say you can only be a digital marketing superhero if you are at everything. So right, what I want you to do now guys, put your pens away, <laughs> chill out a little bit, because I'm not going to give you uh, massive amounts of things that you can take away. More so, I'm going to give you, hopefully, a Churchillian type performance that's going to inspire you onto greatness. Right, and if you do feel the need to check out my presentation, then you can get it from slideshare.net forward slash Zach Edwards. Okay, so why is it important just to be alright at everything? To demonstrate this, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to take you back to the millennium, so 1999, people were proverbially shitting themselves about the millennium bug. Companies like Boo.com and LastMinute.com were being valued at gargantuan amounts of money. Johnny E, my dad, had just sold his business and had a massive wad of cash in his pocket. And I was like, come on Johnny E, let's build a website. So, we borrowed a uh, mate's office, which was not dissimilar to this, glorious incantation of an office. Uh, and then we uh, had the idea for Prezibox.com. Now what you've got to know at this point is we were completely winging it. We had no idea what we were doing. For example, in our first month of uh, trip, well, not even trading, the first month of uh, existence, we, uh, we didn't realise that you could get monthly broadband contracts. So we were pay as you go broadband customers and it cost us £1,500 in our first month. So literally that's how little a clue we had. Now again, Johnny E in his 60s, not the most technically adept person that you've, uh, you've ever met. So it was literally, everything was on my shoulders. So from specking out the website, finding suppliers, adding products to the site, finding couriers, sorting out the network, yada, 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 everything was on me. So six months later, ta-da, Prezibox.com is born. Uh, what do you mean that we need products on the homepage? Again, evidence that we have no idea what we're talking about. Next. Yeah, so Johnny E, me, sat back, turned on the website, we're like, right, rubbing our hands together, rolling the orders. Nope. <laughs> so if we were lucky, we got like, one order every day, and that's lucky, literally, there was like, we had a, you know, uh, there was a moment of jubilation running around the office when we got an order. So uh, we didn't really matter, because we had no processes in place to deal with processing orders and dealing with, you know, charging people, etc. But what it did mean is that I then had to think, right, shit, we better start trying to get some traffic to the site so we can generate some orders. So I had to become adept at, and again, it was just me, so I had to become adept at doing all these marketing things like affiliates, SEO, paid search. Right, now what you have to appreciate is, back in the 1990s, early 2000s, it was like the Wild West. Now what I mean by that is that it, it wasn't like people riding around the office on horses shooting each other with a spittoon in the corner. It was like a new frontier. So there were no agencies as such like there are today. There were no guidelines, there was no best practices. People didn't share information like they do today. There were no conferences like this. So it was like I had to find everything out myself. I had to do lots of fact-finding mission, lots of loads of sleep because I didn't really know what I was doing. But what it meant was I had to become all right at everything. I wasn't awesome at anything, I was just all right at lots of things. So I had no choice other than to be all right at everything. I had to learn HTML so I could send out a newsletter to our database of seven users. I had to understand about SEO. I had to find out about paid search on things like e-spotting and overture. Etc. Right then, let's fast forward now to 2017, so today. So Prezibox, we're a global brand, we ship into hundreds of countries, we'll do 5,000 orders on a decent day, we partner with lots of big brands, so we're working with McDonald's at the moment on their Monopoly promotion, uh, we partner with people like O2 and 3, etc. So we're doing okay. So that means now I am a digital marketing expert. Boom, see what I did there. Uh, digital market expert, right? <coughs> nope, far from it. As Sam said, I often, uh, in a recent interview with The Guardian, I was described as saying that I want to be the thickest person in the room, and I very often achieve that. And there is me with a photo of some of our goats who often come into the office, and to be fair, they're amongst our better employees. <laughs> Sorry, girls. <laughs> <laughs> right, so why is it so important to be a jack of all trades? Well, 
as Yoda often says, knowledge must you have the end to be. So, I was going to do the Yoda impression there, but I bottled it. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's really important, as I've said several times now, to be all right at lots of things. Now, to be a good digital marketer, it's no good being awesome at one particular thing. You need to have a rounded knowledge. So, they've got posh names for it now. It's called a T-shaped marketer. So, as like you can see, this is more of an aeroplane-shaped marketer, I guess. However, that's you know, a bit pedantic. So, what, they, what this does, is so they've got a core skill of SEO, but then they've got lots of other supplementary skills. Do you want to take a photo of that? Oh wait, you don't? <laughs> okay, it's also called holistic marketing, 360 degree marketing, yada yada yada. But in essence, it's all the same thing. It's having a cross-functional approach to lots and lots of different marketing disciplines. Right, so why is this so important? Here's some <coughs> takeaway-ish bits for you. So, what it enables you to do is understand things like attribution and the customer journey, etc. So it's not like the old days, whereby it was all about desktop and it was all about the last click wins. Now there are multiple touch points on multiple devices and people come to the site through multiple channels. So for example, this is a, a typical customer journey. We've got the rather ravishing young lady on the left and she visits the site via mobile, desktop, tablet, she comes through lots of different channels to the site and she has lots of interactions with your site. Now if you don't understand at least the basics of how mobile works and the limitations of it, then you're not going to be doing your job as capably as you should be to be a digital marketeer. And that's really important. So for example, 65% of people start their journey to purchase on a mobile. 75% of people will who make a transaction on a website will visit via a mobile and another uh, another device. So it's really important. Then who recognises this from Google Analytics? Good hand up. So well done. Yay. So okay, so obviously it's important to understand Google Analytics because that is then you can then see uh, how well or how poorly your marketing efforts are being received by the uh, general public. But then, you know, this, this demonstrates the, you know Attribution. So, for example, here, uh, these are all different customer orders and people are coming to the site via paid search, and direct, and newsletter, and affiliates, and partnership deals. And I think, unless you have a basic understanding of all of these types of attribution that, that all have a part to play in the order or the visit, then I think you won't be able to do your job properly. Okay, and the same goes for offline stuff. So, some of you work for big brands who've got shops. Again, what are the shops doing? What are their marketing efforts? Other forms of advertising, like billboard and television. So you really need to have a full, rounded understanding of all of these types of promotional activity that your company are doing. Right, this is probably the best takeaway I've got. Not because it's a football picture, but it's the way I think of attribution. So attribution, I guess, if you, if you were to look at last click wins, it's like scoring a goal. So the, the last click is the goal that the player has scored. Now that is the way marketers used to think. Nowadays we need to think about it as a complete football team. So a midfielder, for example, passes the ball to the forward to score a goal. The defender makes a last gap tackle. tackle. And these are all parts of, you can uh, use the same analogy for a customer visiting your website. So affiliates play a part, SEO, paid search, newsletters, social, they all play a part in the rich tapestry of a person visiting your site. Right, silo avoidance. Having a rounded knowledge helps you avoid silos in your organisation. Who knows what a silo is? Yeah, you agree. <laughs> you learn something there. So, a silo mentality occurs when several departments will not share information or knowledge with others. Sound familiar? So I think so, you know, I think part of the problem is they don't know what knowledge to share. And again, that's because they haven't got a rounded understanding of what you do. So I think the more departments that have more of a rounded knowledge, especially in marketing, it can only be beneficial to the company. Right. Let's talk about the dark side. Who works for an agency? Oh shit. <laughs> right, okay. But okay, who works? You all work for reputable agencies, yeah? Yeah. 
Yes, there we go. Who doesn't work for a reputable agency? <laughs> so they're the ones I'm talking about. Right, so we've all heard ridiculous horror stories that agencies have done, right, and in-house marketers have done, but let's focus on agencies, that have caused companies... <coughs> five minutes left, don't worry, I'm on fire. <laughs> right, <laughs> these two are too nervous, anyone? So, for, so, agencies can cause massive gargantuan problems that can literally wipe companies out. So for example, who remembers a few years ago JC Penny? Huge American company. They were found to be buying ridiculously dodgy links that got them kicked off Google. Interflora did exactly the same thing. They bought a load of links from really non-relevant websites and they forgot to use the no-follow link. So, you know, that was literally Interflora were no longer on Google. That's massive. You've got to think about the complexity of that. And then, I guess what happened there is that the person who employed the agency didn't fully understand what the agency were doing. So, or the agency didn't really understand, but either way, big issue. Who remembers this from a couple of years ago? House of Phrases, Emojinal, Twitter experiment. Shocking, they're a 167 year old brand that literally one day thought, oh, I know, let's start answering all of our tweets with emojis. And then they even claimed halfway through the day that they'd been hacked by somebody because it was just going disastrously wrong. And then Susan Alban party. There we go, enough said. I'm guessing if you don't know what that is, then uh, look it up on Google. Right, tech. So it's also pretty important to have some tech knowledge to be a decent digital marketer. Now I'm not a tech, I'm not good at particularly anything to be honest, I, but I employed really good people. Um, one of whom is our SEO guy, Sam, Sam down here, SEO, that is. <laughs> <Not SEO. laughs> right, so a few weeks ago, this is data from Prezi Box, our techies did something really stupid that, were, that meant we were no longer appearing on Google for any of our categories. So here's our cumulative rankings using a fantastic ranking checking tool called Pi, data metrics. Okay, but you can see here, just before Mother's Day, perfect timing, that our Google traffic just tanked. Shocking. So, luckily, Sam knows a bit about tech. He spotted it, sussed out the problem on a Sunday afternoon, and we got back up in a few days. But if, we hadn't, if he hadn't known about that, we could, you know, it, literally, we lost 50% of our business over those three or four days. Massive problem. Right, and then finally, employing people. Some of you will be managers now, some of you have your own companies, and then you'll, hopefully you'll be lucky enough to be so in the future. And you're going to employ people. If you don't know about the role that you're employing, how can you possibly employ somebody to do a decent job? So, again, you need to have some rounding knowledge. So how do you get this knowledge? I'm nearly finished, don't worry about it. Right, okay, research. Uh, it's not right. 1999, 2000, where nobody shared any information whatsoever. You can find everything out about everything now. There are things like this. You can follow all your favourite commentators on whatever particular discipline you want, on Twitter and on YouTube and on their blogs. You can go to TED Talks. You can read books. So literally, just research, research, research. Okay. Finally, keep it simple. E-commerce, at the end of the day, is just a shop. You know, it's nothing more... I think we all think, oh, digital, we have to make things a bit highfalutin, whereas really, we're just a shop. People want to come and buy our wares, so let's just keep everything really simple. That's me done. My key takeaway is, as you probably guessed, be all right at everything. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions after, fill your boots, and then I'll pass you over to the young ladies.